What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 8, The Last Day. So the only thing that I really didn't like about this episode was the fact that The Last Day was pretty obvious. Um, I don't know, it was just, it was very predictable. Uh, Robin kept saying, this is the last day, this is the day it all ends, all that stuff. And all I'm thinking is, this is the day where she dies, right? Like, I could see it coming from a mile away. And even, like, whenever she explains everything to uh, May about... I guess, how to get back. She looks up from her dead body. She's like, this is what she was talking about. This is the day that it all ends. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, I get it. You know, it's, she's talking about the day she dies and probably the day, you know, assuming that they are going to use this to get back, maybe this is the day where their time in the future ends as well, possibly. Um, but yeah, so I kind of, I knew that she was going to die in this episode. And that's about the only thing that I really had a problem with. It was just, it was too predictable and it felt like it was way too on the nose. But the rest of it was really, it was good, but it was also very mysterious, and I love the fact that they're keeping a lot of this in mystery, because if they just came out and explained all of it right now after meeting Robin, I'd be like, oh, well, you know, all of this mystery, all of this what happened, all of this just explained like that, piece of cake. But we're getting it in bits and pieces, and what I love how they did in this episode, they actually showed us bits and pieces of Robin's life, I guess, on the lighthouse with everybody else. And they just kept flashing back, and there, it was never really a specific time. It felt like they would flash back, and it was before you know everything bad happened, and then they'd flash back again. It was on the lighthouse, and then it just felt like there was no real. It kind of felt like how her visions were. You know, they were talking about how she could never really tell whether she was in the present, the past, the future. That's kind of how these visions felt. You never really knew exactly where it was on the timeline of the world getting destroyed. Uh, but a few things that do come out of this. One, and probably the most interesting topic to talk about, is Fitz, May, and somebody else. I can't remember who. I think it was Yo-Yo. Uh, they were all talking. Very interestingly, we only really saw those three in the flashbacks. We never really saw Coulson, Yo-Yo talk like Mac had been killed. Um, Fitz, apparently, Robin told him that, about Gemma's death. So I don't know if that means she hadn't died yet, but she was about to, or maybe she did die, and then Robin was telling him of another death she might possibly have in another timeline. So, you know, it's very interesting to see that of the, th you know, of everybody that we saw, we only really saw those three, which means the rest of the team may not be around anymore. Uh, but one of the interesting things is they're having this conversation about, you know, Robin wants them to build this time machine, and Fitz is like, it's not possible. And he just kind of blows up because he's been told about all these different deaths. He's like, it doesn't matter what we do, everybody always dies. You know, even Daisy saw the aftermath and still decided to go destroy the world. That aftermath line gets me wondering what's going to happen. You know, Maybe something bad, horrible is about to happen and she feels like she has to destroy the world to keep it from getting worse, possibly. So it, it kind of... You know, first of all, I was wondering if she was even going to be the cause of the world being destroyed. It sounds like she is. You know, it sounds like that's definitely confirmed now that Fitz has said Daisy still destroyed the world. Everybody was talking about it like it was a, a fact, like it definitely happened. I still was kind of skeptical, but now I feel like it's been confirmed that she is the one that destroyed the world. Now, what was her reasoning behind that? That's where I feel like things are going to get pretty interesting. And whatever the aftermath this, that Fitz is talking about... I feel like that's going to possibly tie in to Avengers Infinity War coming up very, very soon. So I'm really excited to see where that's going. Um, but yeah, aside from that, we've also got, uh, we've got Mac and Yo-Yo on the ship. They're dealing with Flint and trying to keep him alive, trying to get these weapons that Fitz had apparently stowed away. So they're having to, they, they think they're going to have to deal with all the aliens and stuff, but they are walking around and... There not, aren't really a whole lot of aliens. They're like, where'd they go? Well, we come to find out that apparently the Kree set them loose on the people inside of the their living block. And so they go down, they manage to kill all the aliens, which I thought was a little too easy. You know, I, I don't know. It just feels like, oh, you just killed all of them. Just like that. Okay, problem solved. Obviously, you know, they still got the Kree to deal with. But it was interesting to see some of these people sort of turn against Flint because of what he did even though he's trying to help save them. And then finally at the end, 
whenever they save them from the aliens, they're just like, look, the Kree want us fighting against each other. We need to work together if we want to stop them. And that's when people are like, yeah, let's do it. And so they start taking out their little things and their arms, their chips. So I feel like there's about to be an uprising for the lighthouse, which part of me, I, I'm kind of wondering if this is going to even lead to anything just because this is a future that might not even happen. There may not be the world being destroyed and the, them going to live on the lighthouse with the Kree. None of that may happen. So it's one of those things where I feel like this story may not even have a purpose. But at the same time, now all of a sudden we're seeing Robin about halfway through the episode saying, oh, Flint, Flint is going to know. Flint will understand. And so May is just like at the end of the episode, who is Flint? So clearly Flint does have some purpose, and I feel like that's going to be the important part. Not, not the uprising, not the revolution on the lighthouse. It's going to be Flint. So I'm very curious to see what he's got to do with it. You know, What is his purpose in all of this? Why is he so important to Robin? Uh, maybe he's related to somebody we know and his powers are also able to affect something. Maybe he, because he's got the ability to move rocks, maybe he has the ability to find the other pieces of the monolith somewhere. I don't know. Uh, so all of that is going on in the ship. We also see that apparently this one guy that was there with Robin, he doesn't really trust her, what, what she's saying. Um, and so he's trying to find an opportunity to sort of get rid of Daisy and save the world that way. Um, he, I guess he killed Deke's father. I, I don't know, it just kind of felt random. It was sort of thrown in like he finds, uh, they find the monolith. And he's just like, my father would never leave without this. He's like, nah, nah, it was just a bad storm. Of course he left it behind. He's like, no, he would not. What did you do? And then the guy just knocks him out. And so... Clearly, he doesn't really trust Robin's teachings. He's just waiting for a day where he can take out the world killer, um, Daisy. And I guess that that's just the only reason why he's been biding his time. But, of course, at, at the end of their little fight, whenever he doesn't manage to kill Daisy, he's just like, well, Robin, I'm sorry, this is the only way. And she's just kind of standing there because she knows this is my time to go. And so he stabs her. But we do have this very nice scene, and probably one of the best scenes in this episode, where we flash back again. And Robin is a little girl, and she's like, she's just woken up. She's like, Mom, where, Mom? And then May is there, and she's talking to her. She's like, you know, look, I'll, I'll be here for you. I'll always be here for you. I'll be there even in the end. And so we see she has just said to May in the present, or in the future, you know, you said you would always be there. You would even be there for this uh, moment. And so they just have a nice little scene, and May is talking to her, and she's like, look, the time will come where you got to tell me how to get back home. You got to tell me how to save the world. And she says, I never, I haven't seen that vision. And she's like, you will trust me. And then it cuts back to the future again. And she's saying, you were right. I did see a vision of you saving the world. I just haven't lived it yet. And I'm just like, that's really cool to see how back in the day she hadn't had a vision of them saving the world and that scared her and she was terrified. But now she's a little bit more peaceful. She's accepting her death because she did finally see a vision of them saving the world. And she's going to grasp onto that hope and give it to May. And so she tells May how to get back and I guess how to save the world. Um, we don't hear any of what she says because of course we don't. <laughs> We're going to have to wait to find out what she says later. Um, and that's pretty much where the episode leaves off. The only thing we see with Cassius in this episode is he's sending his, uh, the, the woman that's working for him, whose name still escapes me, he's sending her down to the planet surface to track down everyone and get rid of them. Um, and he, I think he also wants her to bring Daisy back alive. He said if she's dead, well, we can use her as a trophy. So now she's down there with everybody. And I guess now it's going to be a battle against her whenever she finally shows up, which is a problem because she's very strong. Daisy doesn't have her powers still because they haven't managed to get the thing turned off um, that's dampening her powers. May is still not 100% because she's still dealing with a wound. Uh, Coulson can still fight decently. Uh, Fitz and Simmons, they were working on, they found a machine that apparently can send them back in time if they can find all the pieces of the monolith. So... That's sort of their job right now. Uh, it is nice to finally have them together and just sharing moments together because that's... Who doesn't love Fitzsimmons? You know what I mean? They're, just, they're the best. Uh, but aside from that, I mean, that's pretty much all for this episode. I can't really think of anything else that stood out to me. Um, so 
now on to the next one. And now we're on to episode nine, Best Slate Plans. So this one continues where we picked up, or left off, picked up, whatever, on the last episode, which is everybody down the surface is trying to get back to the lighthouse um, to sort of meet up because they need to find Flint. And, you know, Mac and Yo-Yo and Flint are trying to figure out what to do at the lighthouse to sort of stop Cassius from pretty much wiping out the rest of human race, except for the ones on the Earth, obviously. So we've got the two sides of the story. Um, of the two, I will say the one that was more interesting this time, surprisingly enough, was Mac and Yo-Yo's side. Um, the reason I say surprising is because, like I said in the last episode, it feels like that one is more kind of pointless, I guess, just because what they're doing there, saving those humans, it won't matter if they go back and change time. You know, then that this timeline won't exist anymore. At least I don't think. Um, I'm still not entirely sure how time travel works in the MCU, but we'll see. But surprisingly enough, it was more interesting because more stuff is going on with Cassius, uh that I truthfully was not expecting. So we see... He's planning on just blowing up the entire thing, you know, wiping everybody out with a push of a button because he's got bombs set up to incinerate everybody. And so Mac finds these bombs and has everybody work together to get all the bombs put in one place and get everybody away from it. And so they do succeed in doing that before Cassius presses the button. And not only that, but whenever he blows it up, he actually blows up this level that apparently cuts him off from everybody else. Um in the lighthouse so i do find that it was a very clever plan because now he doesn't have access to those humans anymore of course mac yo yo and um flint are all still up there with him but i do like the fact that they had this clever idea to keep him from ever being able to access the humans again so very smart but also what's going on in this one there are two major things that just sort of stand out to me like holy crap moments first of all tess comes back and I'm just like, what the heck is she doing there? It turns out apparently he somehow revived her from death. I was not aware that was possible, but apparently he has the ability to do it. And there's still a part of me that kind of wonders if maybe this is even Tess anymore. You know, there's a chance that it's like, kind of like how uh, it was with Ward and Hive. You know, whenever Ward came back from the dead... He was no longer Ward, he was Hive, the being inside of him. And so I'm wondering if maybe, you know, because that was kind of a Cree type of thing, you know, Hive was an inhuman, maybe they still have some sort of technology like that that has instilled some other creature inside of her. So it's not, it's not really Tess anymore, it's just this creature that's inside of her that's controlling her dead body, sort of, kind of like what Hive did. So I'm so curious to see if that's going to be what's happening or if it's something else going on, if they actually did manage to bring her back from the dead somehow, I don't know. Uh, but I am curious to see where that's going. But on top of that, we do see near the end of the episode, like the last, the after, I don't even know what to call it. There's always that one moment where the shield symbol pops up and then Coulson will say, we'll return in a moment. And then they come back and they show that one final scene that builds into the next episode. This time... The scene was Kasaias walks out of this room and his little right hand man, I, I guess, I don't know what this guy is. He's just been talking to him, sort of giving him information for this episode. But he comes up to him, he's just like, Let me guess, the world killer and her friends are returning on a ship. He's like, Yes, how did you? And he's like, And they're docking in the bay right now. He's like, Yes. He's like, We'll get a team over there. He's like, Well, sir, no disrespect, but how do you know all of this? And he's like, they were using a, a seer down on the planet. I've got a seer of my own. And then it sort of cl zooms in on the door as it shuts. So clearly he also has somebody that has the ability to see into the future. We don't know who it is. I feel like they wouldn't just not show us. I think it would have to be maybe somebody we know. Like maybe Robin from a distant time or something? I don't know. Like, I'm very curious to see what does this mean. Maybe he has his own inhuman that he bred. You know, one of the kids that were put through the inhuman test turned out to be a seer. And so he actually has been using them. The one thing that I do wonder, though, is it feels like he should be complete... Or we should have seen some sort of hint that this was going to happen. But it feels like he's always been one step behind. And so I don't really know if there's been any sort of clue 
in this entire season so far that's said, hey, he might have somebody that can see into the future. It feels like I haven't really seen any sort of hint of that. So I am a little bit concerned that they're just sort of throwing this in last minute to be like, oh, guys, look, now he has a seer too. What a coincidence. Now he's got the ability to see into the future as well. It just kind of feels forced if that's the case. Uh, but if there's actually something going on where he has been playing them this whole time, like he actually is smarter than he lets on, and he has been playing their every move, seeing their every move through this person, and he's just sort of been letting them get this false sense of confidence that they are winning when in fact he's letting them play right into his hands, that could be interesting, but I still feel like he has had this seer for a long time and has only just started using them. Um, and so if that's the case, it just kind of feels like a last minute, oh, we need to make him an actual villain that they have, they're going to have trouble stopping. Because honestly, Cassius on his own, even with his army, he's not that great of a villain, to be honest. Especially compared to some of the other villains we've had in the past on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This one, he just kind of feels, you know, they call him a coward several times. I completely agree. He feels like a guy that's just kind of a wimp. Yes, he's smarter than most uh, most of the other Kree, that's why he was able to survive so long, but he doesn't feel like there's anything that makes him, ooh, he's going to be a challenge to stop. It just felt like he had that one, you know, uh, Sonara, I think is her name. He had her, and she was obviously very difficult to beat in a fight, but now she's dead, and Daisy kills her in this episode. So it feels like that one part of it is sort of done, and now there's nothing else that really makes him stand out. And so it felt feels like that the show was just like, oh, now we need to give him a reason to actually be a hard bad guy to defeat, so let's give him the ability to see into the future. Eh, you know, it just, it kind of, well, actually, now that I think about it, that one guy that Daisy had to fight, or not Daisy, May had to fight, he could see into the future as well. Hmm. We did see that he killed him, but there's a possibility, now that we saw Tess has come back to life, maybe he also brought him back to life. It just hit me. Hmm. I guess that would be interesting. Uh, but anyway, moving on to what's been going on on Earth, uh, or down on the surface. We see the team is trying to get the Zephyr up and flying again. Uh, there are a few different stories going on in this. We see Fitz and Simmons run into the Gravitonium again, and he sort of realizes, and she does too, that they are the ones that created this technology. And it's because they saw this in the future that they were able to create it in the past. And so they're thinking, well, this is obviously a loop, which means this is how it's going to be. You know, this is our future, or else it wouldn't be here. There is a possibility, though, that this is just a possible future. And so because they saw this, they went back in time and created it. But there may be a chance where this is not the future that they encounter, though. You know, they still make the gravitonium for the ship, but it's not necessarily for this future, it could be for something entirely different to help, you know, maybe raise the Zephyr's uh, abilities or something. So that's just a, a little thing they threw in, and you can tell Fitz is getting very upset, and it's sort of leading into kind of what we saw in the last episode, you know, Fitz being very distraught and depressed and very angry with what's going on. He just feels like everything he does is useless. And I kind of feel like maybe that's where they're taking his character, is just the inability to do anything right or do anything of meaning. So, I don't know, just something to look forward to, but right now it doesn't really play that much in the main story. Uh, the main story is mainly focused on them getting the ship up off the ground to get it back up to the lighthouse, and then Sonara sneaking on, and then the fight that she ultimately has with uh, Daisy and Deke. There is a little scene where Deke goes to the guy who killed his father, I think his name is Voss. Um, he goes, hang on, was he down there on the... I don't know. Anyway, um, but he goes to him, and he, of course, is being locked up, and they're saying, you know, Deke, you have the opportunity to do whatever you want to him, since obviously he had something to do with your father's death. So Deke has a chance to kill him, but decides not to. But then he sort of says a few things that maybe it might make Deke think that he has to kill Daisy to keep this future from happening or something. Um, I don't really know if that's the thought process that he's going through. It seems like he might be thinking about it, but I don't know if this is just sort of a red herring where the show's going to make it seem like, ooh, is he thinking about killing Daisy possibly? You know, he's sneaking around behind her before she fights Sonara. So I don't know if they're just kind of leading us on a wild goose chase, making us think, ooh, this could possibly happen, and then they're just going to be like, oh, nope, just kidding. He's going to turn out to be a good guy in the end. 
Uh, but he did show that he doesn't have the willingness to kill anybody. Um, so just a little thing there. We also see that, uh, what was the other thing? Oh, Colson and uh, May, they have a little, obviously they've had their little thing going on for quite a while and it's been, it's been a long time coming. You know, they just, they have that kind of chemistry of two agents that have worked together for a long time and now it's like they realize they understand each other. And while I don't necessarily think that, you know, oh, two people in the field, agents who are constantly taking on daily life and just, you know, trying to save the world, I'm not necessarily saying that, oh, yeah, relationships are always a good thing there. I mean, I've seen other shows where it doesn't work out as well. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow is another example. It was like a small team. Yes, there were some people that did have some good chemistry, but I still felt like the relationships on that show were kind of forced, and it was just sort of like, you know, you have a higher purpose than just hooking up. But with Coulson and May, and even Fitz and Simmons, it feels like this show has done a good job of showing their growth, of being friends and, you know, co-workers in the field and having each other's backs and the type of trust that that takes to rely on the other person like that and how that can sort of develop feelings, you know, and I, I do think it's come about naturally. It hasn't been something that the show forced upon us. Uh, honestly, it just, they, they've shared a lot of screen time together and honestly, it's it's been a lot of fun watching this. I know there are a lot of, you know, Felinda shippers and out, all of them out there. There's a, <clears throat> always shippers for every show. Uh, it, not, it hasn't necessarily been one that I have really been like promoting, but I do see where they do have some good chemistry, and I could see them possibly getting together. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but there was one scene that really did stand out to me, and I really did enjoy, where she's talking, May is talking about you know the fact that she was the one taking care of Robin, and how she was technically her mom for a little bit. And she's like, I just couldn't see myself doing that. And Colson's like, I could. And then Daisy's off to the side. She's like, yeah, totally. You'd be that type of no phone after 7, mom. You know, curfew at 7.30. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, I could see that. So I don't know if they're going to maybe build this to something where maybe she and Colson decide to take a break from the team for a little bit after they finally figure out all of this. Uh, <clears throat> I do think it would be a well-deserved break and maybe something where – Maybe they kind of move them on from the show to do their own thing while Daisy can take over for the team and they instill a few new characters on. I, I would be interested in seeing that. I think that would be a nice thing to do for two characters that have been around for a long time, been here since the start, and have just really grown as two characters that are now sort of finding their <laughs> their their feelings for each other. Uh, you know, the trust has grown into something more than just friendship. So I don't know. I really like how they've handled it. It hasn't been something forced. It felt natural. It's felt like they've actually grown this over, you know, several seasons now. So that's the end of this one. And on to one final one, and then we'll be done. And finally, episode 10, Past Life. So mid-season finale, and quite a doozy. <laughs> um, several bombs dropped. And one literal bomb dropped, but we'll get to that. First of all, I want to talk about the seer that Casillas had, because I was kind of wondering, is it going to be that one guy that he killed? Maybe he brought him back to have him sort of see into the future. Uh, but ultimately, at one point it says, she, and I'm just like, she, hmm, she, what could that possibly mean? Well, Elena's going to go find this person. She walks in there, and all of a sudden Elena sits up on the bed, and I'm just like, I think my brain just left my body. Just, it's, it's gone. What? Pretty much, yeah. Completely blew my mind. <laughs> um, so yeah, Elena was apparently the seer he was talking about. And she is not actually a seer, which I was not expecting at all. He's just getting the information from her of what happened whenever she was there last time. Uh, apparently he's just been killing her and then bringing her back whenever he needs her. So I find it very interesting once again. Uh, I guess, well, I guess to be fair, he didn't know Elena was there until he saw her. Uh, it didn't even hit me. He said, Elena, yo Elena, yo, yo, Rodriguez. And I'm just like, last episode, I was like, wait a minute. He knows her? Has he seen her yet? I, I don't remember. Well, clearly he does know who she is because he's had her and has been killing her and bringing her back to life whenever he's needed her for the past several decades. So, 
yeah, kind of interesting. Uh, Elena does go get to talk to her, and she drops even more bombs on us. So we hear from her that apparently the team is pretty much the responsible, or the ones responsible for the Earth getting cracked in half. Uh, and apparently it all comes down to the team makes a decision to try to save Coulson. And I'm just like, wait, what? Save Coulson? And she's like, he's sick, and he's dying, and he knows it. And then we see, right as she says that, we see Coulson icing Daisy trying to get her to go with him because she doesn't want to. And he hides this, like, it looks like a disease crawling up his chest. Now, few theories that I have, I'm not entirely sure if any of these are even close. Uh, but one is the Cree blood is finally catching up to him. You know, the stuff that brought him back to life in the first place is finally, like, taking its toll. Similar to the, if you guys have seen Logan, you know, the adamantium inside of Wolverine that is making him invincible. Well, now that his powers are starting to wear off, now it's starting to actually affect him and kill him from the inside. Kind of wondering the same thing here. If maybe the Cree blood, yes, it brings you back to life, but then as, after a long period of time, it will start to take its toll and start to affect you and eventually kill you off. That may be it. Maybe there's something that we haven't seen over the past couple seasons maybe some sort of injury this past season that he got that he hasn't shown to us um maybe it's just whatever you know loki scepter that killed him maybe somehow it left some sort of imprint on his body that's now taking its toll i don't know like it just feels like there's so many possibilities from this but apparently somehow the team makes a decision to try to save him and that decision ends up destroying the world how? <laughs> like, that is the one thing that I truly don't understand. How is trying to save Coulson's life going to end up destroying the world? That is crazy to me, but Elena said it, so I doubt she'd lie <laughs> to herself. At least I don't think she would. Uh, but she, kind of going along the same lines of Fitzsimmons from the last episode, she's getting that sense of, I've heard all of this before. You know, I, I told myself this when I was here last time. And so she just has a sense of, oh, it's all a loop. It's never going to change. Nothing is going to change. Obviously, it probably will just because I doubt we'd watch a show where eventually, you know, they're trying to save the world and then they go back and nothing changes. You know, they just go through the same thing again. That just wouldn't be, I don't know, it wouldn't really leave a hopeful message. It'd be like, nope, you can't change time. Everything is set in stone. Nothing matters. <laughs> it'd be kind of depressing. Um, but anyway, so we learn all that from her. Uh, we see, you know, a lot of the team is working to get Flint um, to be able to get the materials. Uh, apparently, needs like a bunch of limestone or something to recreate the monolith. They're trying also to get this device set up that can cause the monolith to react again and send them all back in time. And so this is all building up. You know, there's several moving parts, but basically, it's all building up to. You've got Coulson, May, an unconscious Daisy, and Fitz all in this room with the monolith. Um, Flint and Tess are watching from a, uh, some sort of transporter away from the lighthouse that has, I think, everybody else on it because they know that it's going to sort of destroy the lighthouse when they activate the monolith. Um, you've got Enoch and Deke both setting up the machine. Uh, Enoch ends up getting injured and the machine gets kind of damaged. So, of course, now they both have to sacrifice their lives to get the machine to work again. And then you've got Mac trying to find Yo-Yo. Well, he ends up running into Cassie, or Cassie, Cassius. I, I don't remember how to pronounce his name now. All of a sudden, just kind of went away from my mind. Uh, but he's got fake Yo-Yo, the one from the future, and kills her in front of Mac. So they start fighting. He drinks that stuff that he gave to one of the other Inhumans that caused him to like flip out and super strong and crazy. And so he's like beating Mac down. Well, Gemma shows up and puts the little earpiece in uh, Cassius's ear that causes him not to be able to hear anything that he put in her, in her ear. And so now he's like dazed and confused and then Mac takes his shotgun axe and stabs him through the back and kills him. And now it's Mac, Yo-Yo, and Gemma all running back trying to get there before the machine goes off and sets the monolith off. And we don't see if they made it or not. And frankly, that kind of concerns me because I'm thinking back and I'm just like, okay, we know Elena makes it back or else, you know, she wouldn't have been able to talk to herself here. We know Mac makes it back because she talks about losing Mac in the fire. Um, so I don't know when the fire is going to happen, but apparently there's some sort of fire that's going to cost him his life. But in the flashbacks we had two episodes ago and 
you know, when Fitz is talking to May, he said at one point that Robin was telling him about Gemma's death. And I'm just like, why is that significant? You know, why is he freaking out about that? Could it be that she didn't make it back with the rest of the team? Possibility. Because <laughs> we didn't see who did and didn't make it back. So once again, we could be without Fitzsimmons for the rest of the season because maybe the rest, the whole team made it back, but she didn't. <sighs> this show is torture. <sighs> so that is a possibility. Obviously, you know, we'll see once we get back. Thankfully, I'm watching this several weeks after these three episodes happen, so it's only like, what is it? It's like two weeks away before we finally get back into it, so it's not too long before uh, it comes back on and I can find out what exactly happened. But yeah, so that's where the team leaves off. Uh, we see Tess talking to Flint and talking about how the future is now theirs to shape, and she's like, here's your blueprint, and gives him the Earth. And of course, we've seen him being able to control rocks, so there's a possibility, oh, maybe you can start rebuilding the Earth, possibly. Um, but once again, I kind of have to wonder, is this going to mean anything? You know, because they're talking about their future. I'm just like, yeah, I, you know, I do care about these characters. You know, they, they did a good job of making me actually care about these people in the future. Even though they are new characters and they have no real connections to our team. But at the same time, is this future even going to exist anymore? You know, is this, is our team going to just go back in time and change all this so they don't even have to worry about this anymore? That's the one thing that I'm kind of like... You know, is this important? Is this something that I should even care about? Her talking to Flint about reshaping the world and kind of making their own future. Like, is this something to even care about if this future isn't even going to exist? So I have to feel like something is going to come of this. I don't know what. I don't know exactly if this is going to play into the rest of the season at all. But I feel like they wouldn't just focus on this if there was no point. You know, I, the show... I do have a bit of faith in the show that they're not just going to put in some pointless storyline that's not going to lead anywhere. You know, there are other shows that I feel like would possibly do that. Um, but this one, it feels like this show does a very good job of making sure everything has a point. You know, even that one throwaway line from Fitz in the flashbacks talking about Jim's, you know, Robin seeing Jim's death. There's a part of me that's just like, that couldn't have been for nothing. You know, he wouldn't just say that if everything was all hunky-dory between him and Gemma and, you know, if that was the only point of it. So I feel like that's maybe why he said it, you know, the possibility that she ended up getting left in the future because she didn't make him back in time for the monolith. So all these little things playing around. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. There are a few things. M most of it, though, is, you know, Cassius. There are some interesting scenes between him and uh, Sonara's corpse where he's, like, talking to her. He kills the doctor that apparently has been bringing back all these humans and inhumans from the dead. Um, so that's... You know, he just kind of lost his mind in this episode. I'm just like, that was a pretty interesting arc for him to take. You know, this guy who, for most of the season, has been pretty calm and composed. And then all of a sudden, this last episode just sort of loses it. You know, starts talking to a dead body and then takes that uh, potion that turns him crazy. And he's just like screaming at Mac. And I'm, gonna, I'm going to rip open your uh, body and beat you to death with your own skull and all that stuff. But, you know, that's about all that happens with him as far as the team in general. You know... Colson and May and Daisy obviously have their little thing where she's talking about she doesn't want to go back, but Colson needs her there. I don't really know where they're going with that. You know, obviously the fact that Colson is dying, he knows it as well. Kind of had to wonder. I I kind of had to wonder how much of him deciding to bring Daisy back is because of that. I don't really know exactly what the sickness is though, and that's where I I haven't had any sort of hint that he's possibly dying. You know, there's no. There's never been any sort of, like, clue for that, where it's just like, oh, Colson might be dying, like, holy cow. With, I talked about, uh, with Cassius talking about his seer, how there was no sort of clue that he had a seer. Well, we find out why in this episode, you know? It's because it was Elena, and he didn't need her until now. And she wasn't really a seer, but more of a, oh, she is here with the rest of the team? Well, now I can use her information to get, get the, uh, the one step ahead on the team, so... That part of it, it makes sense. And I feel like the same thing here. There's been no sort of clue or hint that Colson is dying and he knows it. And so I feel like there's a reason for that. You know, whether he is hiding it very well from the rest of the team, whether he knows it and he's trying to find a way to get back because he wants to find a way to keep himself alive, maybe. 
I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see, though, what this sickness is, where it came about, and how is this going to lead to the end of the world. They've got a very good setup for the second half of the season. And while I am very nervous because <laughs> it feels like, you know, this could be a make or break uh, end of the season as far as people dying or not dying, it's kind of concerning because I do like all of these characters. Um, but, I mean, it's a very good setup. And this first half of the season was very different. It was in a completely different timeline, new characters, um, a world that is not their own. It'll be very nice to return back to the world that they do know and very nice to see kind of what's been going on while they've been gone. Uh, I don't know when they're going to return, whether they're going to return kind of you know, six months after they left or if it's going to be right when they left. Uh, but I'm curious to see what's going to happen next. Hopefully you guys are too. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these three episodes? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for your Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. reviews. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.